Hi everyone, Julie here and welcome to the June Sew and Chat. I can't believe how quickly this year is, is going. What I'm doing at the moment is I'm actually sewing a strip of knitting that I finished yesterday onto the first three lots. This is a bit of a I won't say a dog's breakfast of a quilt, but it's going to be huge. I've worked out it's 23 squares long and it should be 20 or 21 wide and that fits a queen size bed. It's actually a little bit too long, but obviously I can't shorten it now that I've, um, you know, once I've done that first strip, I should have been checking it at like 20, 21, 22, but I didn't even... I expected it to go to 25 which is pretty stupid because 25 would make it 2.5 meters which is way too long for any bed so at 23 I just went out and checked it and it's definitely long enough I mean not that not that it matters if it hangs off the the bottom of the bed a little bit but it's um it's keeping me busy I've got a load of wool delivered the other week and I've got a load in my shopping cart for the organisation or well, the store's called Spotlight and it does all you know sewing, craft, homewares, curtains, blinds, um, all those sort of things. Um, years ago you used to get everything from department stores and department stores, well if you're English and you're not young and stupid you would um remember are you being served that was set in a department store which interestingly enough um i grew up in sydney and my local department store and there's one in the center of sydney as well was in fact david um not david jones well there is david jones was um that's another chain of department stores that's still going was grace brothers which was the same name as Are You Being Served? And also, strangely enough, you've got Haberdashery, which is... which is, um... I'm not sure if that's... fabrics? Fabrics um, and things to do with sewing. But in Australia, you also had in department stores, you had the Manchester department, which English people, as you well know, Manchester is a city, not a department or a section in a department store. But Manchester was basically all your linen and towels and linen and everything else. I mean, it's a, I don't know what, why it was called that, but that's what it was definitely called. So you had haber, haberdashery, and Manchester and these stores now there are still department stores there's department stores in the major cities and probably in the great big suburban like shopping malls which there's well there's one sort of relatively close to here um, it doesn't have any department stores other than, you know, like Kmart and such. And to me, they're not a department store, not where you can go and... To me, a department store, you can get everything you need for a house from furniture to lighting to crockery to everything. And places like Kmart, they'll do some of those things. But department stores, we're talking a lot better quality. So there's my spiel on department stores. So I got an order from Spotlight, loads of wool, and I need another load. This isn't going to be enough what I got for for the um, blanket. I'll just show you. I've got a plastic tub um, there, and that's full of wool, and that's not going to last. That's not going to be enough. So I will order more and a few other bits and pieces. I will, once I've sewn this together, I'll go into the other room and show you it spread out. I'm doing, start of the fifth strip. So green, lemon, brown, the same brown I'm using to join the strips together because it's 
pretty inoffensive and the next strip is blue. Now anybody that's a knitter will probably have the same problem that I have which is where do you put your ball of wool? Well I've tried the plastic containers where you have the th wool coming out the top. I've got a like a mesh one I bought recently which will hold a tiny little ball of wool but won't hold these 100 gram balls, the big balls. I mean this has done loads, I mean they're big. These balls of wool are not small. Um, what I tend to do is put it in a plastic bag, you know like a little grocery bag and tie a knot in the ties and have the wool coming out and it just sits on the floor but it's noisy and annoying. I've got sewing bags like knitting ones with a hole for the wool to come through, you know, a zip up bag. They're fine, but with these bigger balls, they don't have room to turn around and you get the wool out in the right spot and they get jammed up in the corner. So, you know, I have done it where I've got a little set of drawers here. I've put the wool in the, you know, in a drawer and mostly closed it, but it's just messy. And the other day I came up, or well, the other week now, with the perfect solution. If you're knitting, especially if you're changing wool every, yeah, like I'll, I'll do about five of these a day, I suppose, is changing wool, everything else. My solution is a bucket. I've got a bucket here, it's a square bucket. There's my blue ball of wool that I'm using. So I've got the bucket on the floor, ball of wool, I said, I mean they're not small. You know that's, well these are 10 centimetres long so that's like 20 centimetres, that's 8 inches. Because my ruler with inches has fallen on the floor. But if we go, yeah 20 centimetres, which is near enough 8 inches. Yeah, they're not the easiest things to have in a bag and unwind, but throw it in the bucket down there at the side and it just rattles around. The bucket's this deep. You know, you don't have to have a square bucket. I mean, I never, I bought this bucket years ago and it never had much use. There's my wool in there. And I don't have to reach down all the way to the floor to pick the bucket up because the height of the bucket. And the bucket's clean, it's never been used for anything other than, I don't know, water maybe, or you know, soapy water for cleaning. So I do have a smaller spare bucket, a little blue one, but I think this one's good because I can pull on the wool. It's not going to pull out, it's not going to come out of the bucket. The bucket just sits there on the floor. If I have to go like to hospital when I have my other hip done, yes, I'll take a plastic bag and put wool in a plastic bag if I'm knitting at that stage. But that's my knitting. I need to look at my list of what I wanted to talk about today. Um, obviously like normal thank you everyone for your support and all the comments and everything and don't forget to like and share and subscribe and all the rest of it. I'm coming up to 2,000 subscribers which is basically taken near enough three years um, so I'm still on par to reach 100,000 subscribers in 150 years, which is physically impossible. You know how these people end up with 100,000 subscribers in six months or a year is beyond me. I mean, yes, I'd like that and I am going to expand my interests to the dollhouse things, which I have started not just planning but actually doing I will do either next week or the week after possibly next week so it'll give me something different to do other than knitting is do miniature front door mat that's you know, three inches sorry three inches by one and a half inches but I'm going to make one that's a little bit smaller I'm doing a, a little cross stitch at the moment 
I can cross stitch. I'd rather not do the finer stuff, but I did get out of that spotlight order, I did get some 14 count and 18 count, no, 16 count cross stitch fabric. And I'm going to, I've made one doormat out of 14 count, and I'm going to make another one for a tutorial out of 16. Same, very similar design. And I will make that this coming week and do a tutorial on that. But I'm doing, for my dollhouse that I may never have, but I plan to, and it won't be until at least the end of the year, is do some pictures. I was thinking I could actually try drawing something. I mean, I'm not a artist by any stretch of the imagination, but having a go at drawing, drawing a, I've got a painting in the kitchen that I'd like to have a go at drawing. The painting I actually did myself, it was my first go, just a lighthouse on a cliff. Came out well as a painting, not sure if it'll come out well as a, as a drawing. Maybe I need to get some pastels, not the oil pastels, I've got them, but the chalk type ones, soft ones, I think they call them, um, and have a go at that. But for a start, I'll try colour pencils. I've got paints, I've got pencils, I don't have any watercolours. But have a go at making some miniature paintings or drawings that can be hung, framed and hung in a dollhouse. And with that in mind, I started yesterday a cross stitch. I'll show you the picture first. Cross stitch of a bonsai tree, which is quite cute. I've got the I got the threads as part of my order from Spotlight. I got I think it was ten or twelve lots of cross stitch. You know, DMC stranded cotton and I'm going to gradually build that up but that's it so far it is tiny I've just got all the greenery to do I'm not put that under there that's only an inch and a half across where's my ruler gone that's right put, put something down and then you can never find it again but it is there it is but across the top of the pot thing is three and a half centimetres, which is an inch and a half. The branches for the tree will make it a bit bigger. I'll get that done probably today. Because of my sight, I do have a new desk lamp, which is runs off a USB off the laptop, which gives me enough light for doing this sort of work, but not cross stitching at night and especially not 16 count because it's too fine but I will show you this I will frame I've got some wood coming that's suitable for making a little frame and maybe put acetate in front of it so it's like my other cross stitches probably you know framed with glass but that just needs all the greenery done I'll show this um either in the video when I do the front doormat or next sew and chat you'll see this finished and hopefully framed but that's another thing I'm doing I would love to be able to properly cross stitch I'm umming and ahhing about it and that leads me on to my health issues now as most of you know I had the MRI and it came back clear, which was a very good thing. After waiting five weeks for the specialist at the eye hospital for somebody to get back to me regarding having, it's called an OCT scan, regarding having that scan and other neurological tests that he said would need to be done, I finally gave up and phoned them up and was booked in to have it done in a couple of weeks. Well, they said they could have done it next week. I said, no, no, we'll leave it. And it was booked in to be done in July because there's no trains running to Melbourne from where I am for June. And there's no way I'm getting the the substitute bus again because you know, that last time made me throw up. So I'm not going through that again. So I have an appointment for July. So that's not 
not a problem. You know, my sight hasn't got better, it hasn't got worse, I don't think, but, you know, I can't have the the um, diagnosis actually stabilised until I have all these tests. So I was having coffee with my friend the other morning before she was having her eyes tested at the optometrist that I also go to, and that's in the arcade where the, um, where the cafe is. So we had breakfast and then went over to the optometrist and the optometrist, you know, asked me how I was doing and I said, you know, said I was all still the same, that the MRI came back okay and all the rest of it. And he said he'll have a quick look at my eyes while I was there. And so he you know, saw my friend and while well, she was waiting for, I don't know, drops to take effect or whatever, he called me in and I told him about going to have this OCT scan which is a scan of the back of the retina. So not like an MRI or a um, CT scan, because I've just had both of them. Um, and he said, oh, we can do that at our offices in, they got two offices, one in the town where I live and one in the town where I used to live. So oh, we can do that at the other, the other office, you know, in the other town. And I said, well, I'll see what the, eye hospital says first so when I came home I phoned the eye hospital and said you know what actual tests are being done and the woman went away and found out and she said you know um, the OCT scan and a field of vision test and to see the specialist I said well is the specialist just going to give me the results of those tests or is it for something else and she went away and came back and said, oh, it's just to tell you what those tests result. I said, well, in that case, um, can you cancel the appointment? So no having to go to Melbourne, which is a huge relief, not just to me, but to my friend as well. And I rang the optometrist back up and basically 10 days from now, I'm going to their other offices to have the OCT scan, which will actually cost me, whereas it would have been free at the hospital, but it's only going to cost me $40, which I would have spent more than that on train fares, taxi fares, lunch and whatever else from if the, we went to Melbourne. So I'll get those tests done. He already looked the other day at the back of my eye and said it's all healthy, so I think it's... I mean, this condition, and I've said before, it's hemneopia, can be caused by, you know, a slight brain bleed or something like that. It doesn't have to be major like a stroke, although strokes can cause it. Um, but I'm just glad that, you know, in 10 days, that's basically going to be the end of the test. So I don't think they're going to find anything. The eye hospital, the man I spoke to, you know, six weeks ago, he said that they were trying to find, not necessarily, well, the cause, not, they can't treat it, it's not something that's treatable. They were looking for the cause in case they can stop it happening again. And I thought, well, it'd be nice for it not to happen again, but we shall see. So hopefully when those tests are done, the optometrist does those tests. The field of vision test is the one I that he first um, sent me to the eye hospital about. That's where you look in the machine and you focus on like an orange dot, and you have a button thing in your in your hand. And every time you see a green dot, you press the button. And that's when we realise that everything to the left of my vision, looking out my right eye only, because you do it one eye at a time. Um, I wasn't pressing the button because I wasn't seeing anything to the left. And I, I'm still not seeing anything to the left. If I've got my keyboard in front of me and I go for the letter A, which is on the far left of the keyboard, all I see is S. It's like my keyboard starts at S, which is the next letter. So I have to actually move my head to be able to see the A. You know, that, that sort of thing. Um, 
you know, or you read a word and it's, you know, you, you did it the other, the other week and the word was wed, W-E-D. And it just wasn't in context, you know. There's no way the word wed should have been there, so I had to like move my head and the word was allowed. But all I saw was those last letters because it was towards the left of the page. So hopefully get these tests done. It may show that there's a slight improvement. I mean, yes, I did go back to my quilt. I am doing cross-stitching, but obviously can't sit and cross-stitch all night like I used to. Um... My eyes get very tired if I go out and, you know, if I'm driving, concentrating, so I'm trying not to do that. My friend will take me down for these tests. So that's okay. She'll pick me up next week. We'll go for coffee. She'll wait while I go to the chemist to get my prescriptions. You know, those sort of things. To save me going out or I'll, I'll be back to just moving the car in the driveway so that the guy cutting the grass can, can get down to the... Um, we get the ride on round the the um where's my list i had a i've got to go outside today and in, in the yard and fill up my green waste bin with cuttings from the hedge had um new hot water service installed on monday and they didn't take the old system or the box or anything away so i'm just going to make a space that the box can go up against the fence so as it's not going to blow everywhere the tank I don't know, the owner the owner of the house, who I've never met or spoken to, his brother does property maintenance, including his properties. And that's who I've been dealing with. So he came out the other day with another brother, who's an electrician, and they updated the, the um, electric meter board where the power comes in. They He changed the taps for my washing machine, which was... What I wanted done, you know, eight, nearly eighteen months ago. He um, made a whole list of things because it's the first time he's seen the house as well. Whole list of things to be done, which will be good if they all get done. But um, yeah, new hot water service, so that should work out cheaper because the other one was leaking, which has been costing me a fortune I think over the past or well, all of May. So not good when your bills are mounting up like that um uh, okay just not sure what on my list i want to talk about next okay i've got some in that spotlight order i also got some i got the ada for doing some cross stitches i've got some double-sided tape um some fabric because I want to make some furniture some dollhouse furniture so I've got fabric for covering like a couch or chairs or whatever um, there's also I got I think I got three meters of green fabric which when I finish this will go into the other room and I'll show you the fabric I've got fabric for the binding for that big green quilt and I will also do a video on making your own binding when I go to do that. So that'll you know, fill up another video. I got um, I got some fabric glue for when I'm doing the furniture. And there's no logic to it, but if I buy craft glue, which I think is probably almost exactly the same thing, they won't send it out. You know, it, it's pick up only but fabric fabric glue same sort of bottle same sizes to be honest it's probably almost the same product they will send out so I've got some fabric glue and double like I said double sided tape I've got fabric I've ordered some more wood which will come in the next few weeks that's coming from China um, and then I can get stuck into making some things i saw a video on making a tea chest now it's only two inches two inches square by about two and a half inches high um and the metal strips are made out of 
um, aluminium foil, or well, America call it aluminium, but we call it aluminium. Um, so I've made a load of strips to be glued onto the edges of these boxes, and the boxes are quite good. I'm going to make a few of them because it's giving me practice in cutting accurately, which I think is a long learning process. But I've got decent knife, de decent blades, getting another knife that's more sturdy. Well, it's in my eBay watch list along with everything else. But um, I've got, you know, I've got things to do. I'm still tossing up whether to buy a cross stitch kit because the kit I want is 16 count, so it's fine. So there's no way I could do it of an evening unless I had really good lighting. Um, but it's got writing. It's a um, like a wildflower sampler by the same woman that makes nearly all the other cross stitch kits I've done. This one luckily isn't one of her new new ones because her new new ones don't have DMC thread. They've got a I don't know what brand, but it's not DMC, it hasn't got that nice feel to it. And I mean, I don't like anchor thread, I do like DMC, so the last kit I did of hers was, I don't know, glass, I think, or something for my friend, and I had to actually get a list of the thread numbers that would be DMC from her in order to actually save the threads and my threads go into I've got this box here they're just some colours that I've used in the bonsai but I've got my threads and they're all I've got the DMC numbers don't know if you can accurately see that but it's there's numbers. I mean, this one is number 3843, and I know that that goes up here. That's 3845, so it goes there. You know, these are all, I hadn't bothered to put them in. Number 311, which sometimes the numbers, there's no logic. You know, it's like a red, a blue, a grey, white's white. That one's 300, so they can go in, just finding something there. Yeah, you know, that these are all actually in order, number order. I've got plastic bobbins, but the problem with the plastic bobbins is that the slot is too wide. You can see the slot there. It's too wide, the threads don't stay stuck in it. And my local fabric shop when I was last there, last year buying fabric, I bought a packet of just cardboard ones which the stickers stick to much better and the threads actually stay caught in the little slots. So I'll use them for now. There is a crafting or sewing it's called Oz stitch if I was going to buy a meterage of Ada fabric it would be got from them or I have done in the past I bought DMC threads that I knew the numbers for from them I mean spot like cheaper it's like 90 cents if you're a VIP member 90 cents per per thread you know a lot of stranded cotton whereas the other place I think is probably about a dollar twenty in my local shop with the expensive fabric. Theirs were about a dollar fifty, so it might be a case of going and getting some numbers, and then ordering them. Because Spotlight, you can't just browse, go through the colours one after the other. You have to pick one, then pick another one, and if you don't know what they are, if you don't have a DMC chart or something handy or know exactly the you know, if, you, if I bought the 
cross stitch chart it would give me the numbers the specific numbers but that's just a very very expensive way of doing a cross stitch you know, if you can get a kit that's got DMC fabric that's fine I wouldn't buy another one of her kits that has the cheap fabric I would actually just buy the chart and she actually said to me that's why she makes charts available when she makes the kits available because some people want to use DMC thread and don't want the cheap stuff that's in the that's in the kits but this wild flower sampler she said it will be because it's um, not such a new kit it will have DMC threads with it so that that was good to know so looking at my list I've said thank you to everyone talked about cross stitches I'll show you the binding the fabric that I'll make the binding out of when we go into the other room um, second underwater quilt I think it's a do I throw good money after bad situation I've probably got probably got I don't know 5,000 7,000 hexagons I don't know I'm guessing either made or already sewn together for the second underwater water quilt because as you know I got the different fabric for the sky I've done a load of the sky with the birds in it I've done a chunk of the bottom with the sunken ship what I haven't done is anything with the sea and as I've said before I was going to do the bumbleberries again but that was that fabric just won't go tight enough over the papers I mean it's a lovely fabric to sew because you can get the needle th into it easily but because some fabrics are like cardboard as yeah people probably realize um, so I need a fabric other than bumbleberries which means buying fabric and I'm not wouldn't buy the fabric for the sea until I'd actually drawn out all the rest of the 130 or use some from the other quilt obviously 130 blocks and written in each block you know if it's a if there's two fish in sea a bit of seaweed in the water then there's I write on each sheet how much of what color and then I can add up and I did this when I was working out the sand and the sea for the last quilt so the sea I needed I knew I needed enough to cover 2,600 hexagons so I could work out the meterage at you know, um, 746 hexagons per meter so it's work you know can be worked out because I wouldn't buy the fabric for the sea in stages so I'd need to you know, get ink in the printer and print out you know probably close on a hundred sheets or 80 sheets of hexagons and then just color in drawing fish seahorses the underwater shipwreck what's left to be drawn of it the ship above the the steamer above the waterline and where it comes in under the waterline all the fish seahorses and octopus or octopi work it all out and that way I can work out the sea now my problem is do I even want to do the second quilt carry on with it at the moment the answer is no because I ha I've got nowhere to put the first one which is why I'm going to quilt that green quilt next as far as quilting goes because that one can go on the floor now I've got no pets even if it's only on the floor in the front you know the sewing room but The underwater quilt you know someone said it belongs in a bath because it's fish and I thought well if you could turn it into a huge shower curtain that would actually get more use than sitting in a tub but I can't turn it into a shower shower curtain I haven't got enough room in the bathroom for it to hang on a wall because it's got to go right from the ceiling to the floor um, so I don't know that it's ever going to actually get quilted which is why I even think about the second one and I only think about the second one because 
it has been started and I do have all those thousands of hexagons sitting there already covered ready to go into that quilt so my dilemma is and I won't do it you know well I won't say I won't do it this year but I'm not going to think about it until or at least after winter because of that room being freezing is do I want to go and spend and we're not talking a fortune we're talking four meters maybe considering the size of the boat and everything else for the the other quilt had the cliff running down for two and a half blocks wide down the side this one won't have that so there will be more sea so let's say five meters five meters of fabric at let's you know even if it was only thirty dollars a meter that's still a hundred and fifty dollars the fabric I've got a sample of like a half meter I quite like that that's probably thirty five dollars a meter but we're talking a hundred and fifty dollars plus or 150 minimum of fabric for the sea on a quilt you know do I spend that money put all the effort in of cutting it up and then covering like four or five thousand hexagons for a quilt that's going to end up in a tub alongside quilt number one underwater quilt yeah it's not a case of good money after bad but it's good money after good for something that's never going to be seen you know I've got enough problems with you know my huge turquoise quilt put it on the bed and I can't use it because it's too heavy and I can't be bothered taking it on and off the bed every day because I haven't got anywhere suitable to put it at the end of the bed you know maybe down the track it can get used maybe not but you know if I end up getting council housing which is I'm on the waiting list for which could be two months two years or ten years it's only ever going to be a a one bedroom unit that they would offer me and in a one bedroom unit I'm going to have enough trouble finding enough space for my you know current things I have on the walls like the quilt my mother made that has to go on a wall I'm not putting that in a tub um, you know, I can't cover up all my windows with quilts. I'm not living in the dark. Yeah, you know, it is a a legitimate concern as, you know, why do quilts when you're not going to have anywhere to do them? So that gets put aside. And now I'm on to my studying. That's probably the last topic. So that can go away. Um, just looking at the timer. And I can't believe that it says 17. Um, I had my exams last week. I had one assignment due that was due the previous week on legal professional skills, which is all about research and all the rest of it. I'm hoping I passed that one because I'd already failed it once. Um, with my assignments for that, it's three assignments, no exam. I got 25 out of 35 for the second assignment, 10 out of 15 for the first one. So going into this third assignment, which was a 2,000 word assignment, I was already I was sitting on 35 out of 50. And this final assignment's worth 50. And I'm just, if I can't get at least 15 out of 50 for that assignment, then I don't deserve to be studying at all. So that's one subject. The other subject is ancient history, which my subject for this trimester was Alexander the Great. I had the exam for that. You have between Monday morning and Wednesday night to do it. I was going to do it Monday morning, but they um, were doing the hot water service on Monday, so I decided to put off doing the exam until Tuesday did that on Tuesday morning it was 
wasn't too bad an exam going into the exam like the other one I think I was sitting on 37 out of 50 and that exam I think it's worth 40% but either way I needed another 13 out of whatever 13 out of 40 or 13 out of 50 to to pass that subject so I'm quite confident with that I mean my assignment was marked very generously yeah so we'll we'll see how I went with that the third subject was torts which if you don't know what torts is that's basically negligence is I don't there's one assignment out of 40 I got 23 so I did pass it but that's not brilliant the exam I get to do what's called an alternative exam because of my sight issues which means I get a bit of extra time and I don't have to do it where you have your computer taken over by a supervisor or yeah basically it's a it's called an online supervised exam I don't know what's happened here something's gone in or not um, well, you have to sit at your computer, you only get one five minute break. I mean, I've had permission to have more breaks. But I've applied for and was approved to do alternative exams. Which means that rather than have it supervised, I get to just do it like a take home exam like my history one was. And looking at the instructions, it says you, you know, open a win, you know, open your browser for the university and you go to the exam page and you click on it and your timer starts once you start so you know exactly how long you're going to have and I'm just trying to get rid of a knot that's appeared in this um, so you've got that and then that's what the instructions were and I checked with the exam department the day before I phoned them out you know yes it is on a word document you know, the guy checked the subject, yes it's a word document, all the rest of it. That's fine, I open up the exam on Tuesday, on Mon sorry, Thursday morning. Because this these exams you only actually have a three hour window, or six hour window to start them. And they open at 9am, so I go online at 9, look at the first question. I've already got a word document open ready, and I answer the first question go to the second question and it says answer it in the space provided which does expand for your answer and then at the bottom it says submit attempt so I've gone back on the phone in the middle of an exam back on the phone to the exam centre and saying if I could, if I press submit attempt does that mean like on a quiz that that's it done what happens to my first one that's in word so I've rung them up and of course got a recording, so I'm guessing there's a lot of people with problems with the exams. Um, you know, leave your name and number and we'll get back to you. And luckily it was the same guy I spoke to the previous day who got back to me and said, said he thinks it's a mistake that it should all have gone on the Word document or the instructions have been a mistake. But he says, do you... do your second question answer, but also copy and paste it onto your Word document. He said, when you submit attempt, that window will actually close, but it'll tell you you've still got the other one to do, and you can go back to the, you know, a certain part, and you can submit it. So, all in all, got the exam done, did absolutely woeful second question answer, which was about nuisance and trespass. The first one was on medical negligence, which was interesting. Um... I can't seem to get this knot out of oh, there we go. Um, but I'm not sure. I mean, I have to get 26, uh, sorry, 26 out of 60 in a subject that is, you know, extremely hard. So I'm not sure about that one. Hopefully I pass the other two. But we shall, oops, 
and that went the wrong way. We shall have to see. So next semester I'm doing two sub or three subjects. I'm doing oh that'll just have to live as a as a knot. Um I'm doing ancient history subject which is towns and cities in the ancient world which will cover you know Rome, Athens and Egyptian cities maybe you know maybe cities like Babylon, you know Persian cities at the time. I'm not sure. I will find out exactly in a few weeks. The semester I think starts on the 26th of June. Results come out, that's a Monday, results come out the Friday before. So I will let you know on the next sewing chat how I did. So ancient history, towns and cities in the ancient world. Two law subjects, one is the dreaded contract law that in theory I've only done once so far and failed it. But last trimester I was doing it in my assignment, I only got something like 13 out of 40, you know, which is pathetic. So I'm doing it again. It's a required subject. I can't not do it. But, you know, it is a case of, of um, trying to work out why I'm doing so badly. And the other subject is... Is the textbook for it. I mean, these books are not thin. You know, these are massive books. All law books seem to be. And I think they go by weight rather than content. But it's... I don't know if you can see that. Alternative dispute resolution is the subject. It's only a first-year subject. Um, I haven't even looked in this book. I bought it second-hand from the university bookshop for like $60 as opposed to 140 so, um, but second hand, I mean, it looks like it was never opened, which is what most of my law books look like anyhow. But alternative dispute resolution is, um, well, the most common one is mediation. So you've got, and I've been looking at YouTube videos on it, so I'm not so clueless when it, the semester starts. And I've looked at past exams, which don't seem to be too bad either. It's a, not a required subject. It's a listed subject. So, and all the rest of my law subjects for this year are, are um, listed subjects. So it's not dependent upon me passing either torts or contracts. Although those will need to be passed at some point. Um, so alternative dispute resolution... From what I've seen, you know, there's negotiation, which is, you know, the first, no, this isn't working, the first, um, the first level, which can be done between, you know, two individuals, you don't need a third party. The next level is mediation, which is the most common or commonly known alternative resolution used mainly in well in all cases but primarily in you know things like divorces and things like that and the third alternative to going to court is arbitration i mean mediation and negotiation nothing's binding arbitration it is because it's actually a judge normally that um or an appointed official a magistrate or whatever that um that's not going right that um does the judgment and that is binding so it's almost like going to court without all the expense so i'm looking forward to that subject there's a woman that um the university on first year level subjects does it does what's called pass sessions, which are peer-assisted study sessions, which are like one hour a week, 
where you have a student, a fellow student who's already done the subject and passed it well, actually is there, you know, it's a Zoom meeting, you know, anyone that's enrolled in the subject can, can attend. I just attended the past sessions for the first time this last semester for that um, legal professional skills and the woman taking it, someone I've been emailing with for well over a year, we did, we've done a couple of subjects together and she is just awesome. You know, one of the subjects that, I called it the nightmare subject but it's been a breeze compared to contracts, was law and context which is theory, you know, you're talking about legal methods and and it's it's theory it's like a jurisprudence for beginners but the assignment for that was about based on a bit of legis canadian legislation but because this the, the lecturer had lived all over the world but it was specific for quebec so it was a bit of legislation that was actually in french and translated um, about being able to wear um, religious symbols at work or something. There was something like that. Now, you know, I took it from the, I answered it from the um, human rights perspective of, you know, the right to autonomy and the right, you know, those sort of rights. And I think this one was saying that, you know, burqas aren't allowed to be worn and then I just referenced, you know, the French legislation that says, you know, that you can't cover your face in public place, you know, in, you know if you've got a public office job, that sort of thing. Well, the woman taking the past sessions, you know, who is absolutely awesome and who's going to be the most awesome solicitor or lawyer you'll ever find, she actually went so far as to having the sample legislation translated. Now, I, I didn't bother. I just went by, you know, what the question said and went on the the facts of the case, but not bothering with the actual legislation itself. But that's the sort of person she is. But luckily for me, I mean, she's been a great help in that legal professional skills, but she emailed me the other day saying that... Um, She's going to be taking the past sessions for alternative dispute resolution, which is fantastic. I mean, she did that, I think it was um, semester two last year. So, because um, we both did the legal professional skills together in that session. So it's great that I'm going to have her to basically answer any questions I have for this next subject. And as for contracts, she's done it. She sent me her, um, she sent me them last year, her flow charts and things like that. So, um, so it's going to be great having that help. I mean, there's some other students doing the same subject. So I am law subjects that just were at the last um, student session. So there's going to be some familiar faces. I mean, studying online is not always easy yeah you know, motivation is a big thing I mean I'm just in some ways I am so glad I finished that underwater quilt even just to the stage that it's at because that was just a huge distraction yeah you know, at the moment knitting knitting doesn't it doesn't motivate me it's something to do but I can quite happily put this aside and pick it up in three years time the the blanket that i just finished last month or in may that sat that sat in my bag i've got i call it a knitting bag you know if i go somewhere it's a a need to take thinking you know, like when i was going to the senior citizens or whatever yeah it sat in there one of the sections for it was the red red section and I'd already done, I think, two strips for the blanket. And it's sat there for years, since before COVID. And then when I went to hospital, I brought it back out again when my eyes went bad in January. 
and when I went to hospital in February I took the wool and knitting needles to start a new strip which was one of the, the black strips but you know I don't I could put this aside tomorrow if I had something more interesting to do and not pick it up for years you know I don't need it I will use it because it can go on the bed and not be as heavy as that pure wool one but it's not it's not a um, you know a burning desire to get it done and my problem was I had a burning desire to finish that underwater quilt and it interfered with my studies like you wouldn't believe but as I said to the woman taking the the sessions and I actually told one of the tutors one of the coordinators yeah it's been yeah uh, I won't say the word it's been a whatever of a trimester this one it seems to have gone on forever the trimester started on the 27th of February which was three days after my hip surgery it's a, it was a Monday and that was the day I came home from hospital so I was off to a bad start not that I was in extreme pain but yeah you come home from hospital and you've got your first lot of lectures are up you know within days um, then I had all those delays with the MRI and not knowing what was happening with my site and I had to have luckily I'd already sorted out the thing to have a alternative exam or not I had extra time for the exams and extra allowance for putting in assignments I automatically get an extra week if I want it that's on top of the week that you can normally get for assignments I've only submitted one assignment late this this trimester which wasn't bad um, but yeah with all the delays and then going to have the MRI and saying no you can't because it's your fault you didn't tell us about the surgery and their fault because they didn't ask about it because they just went by the original questions and surgery hadn't been an issue then because the MRI was supposed to have been done before the surgery so to finally get the MRI done which was an interesting experience to say the least but to get that done and then waiting for the results not knowing what's happening yeah I mean you have an MRI they don't do them for nothing you know whether it's to show that there's a clot or a tumor or a something in your brain you know yes it's a process of elimination but just to even have an MRI is a um you know it's, it's not something you take lightly I mean the experience was interesting I don't have a problem with that and then I only had to wait less than a week to get the results which was good I mean I could see the pictures before then but that doesn't tell me anything because I'm not a neurologist or a specialist so to get the um, get the MRI done and out of the way and the results done and then of course in April well my friend's dad went into hospital which is why I had to go and see the surgeon in May on my own because she wasn't about to drive me and I had to drive myself um, her dad went into hospital and nearly died he's only I mean he's back home but he's in hospital for th three weeks he was actually in three different hospitals and he's still got to go back and have his gallbladder surgery um you know he's 84 he's not young I mean my mother just turned 90 which is pretty impressive um you know so there was that and also I had to have my cat put down so all in all it was it was not a good semester it um, you know I'm surprised I managed to make it through and like I said obviously my sight's not my sight's not um, I don't know what that is you know my sight's not brilliant it's not as bad as it was I don't think but we'll see and I'll get those tests done in a couple of weeks 
and now I need to find my scissors and um, you know we just take it from there but um, yeah it's been an interesting semester if I can pass two out of the three subjects I'll be happy if I can pass all three I'll be over the moon yes I know I've got a huge big knot here hanging out the end of my knitting which isn't a good thing but it can probably be tucked down to the back and I'll be doing blanket stitch all around this once it's done so yeah so that's pretty much my last month which is a lot of talking for not very much getting done I will so in these tails and we'll then head into the other room with this so that um, so that I can show you this laid out so this is four strips the blanket will be at least 20 so a long way to go like I said not in a rush When I finish this video, while it's um, uploading and whatever, I will I will have breakfast and then I will carry on with that little cross stitch which will get finished today. There's not a lot to do, and that'll keep me keep me occupied for a bit, and then probably some point this week I will start the next video which will be we'll start and finish the next video which will be a tutorial on a front door mat this is not going to sit flat front door mat for a dollhouse so I'll go into the other room take the camera into the other room and I will show you what I've got in there okay here we are in the sewing room so this blanket, they're all done in strips, it's not individual squares sewn together, they're big long strips. And so far, so far I don't think I've doubled up on any colours in an individual strip. Mind you, this charcoal, I'm not sure about. We come down, this is the... That's the bottom. So that's the first row. And the next one I'm doing here, you just saw one, two. I think the third section is a blue. Um, and greys. Some of these colours like that purple. And there's another blue. And a green. I mean, it's this green. And this blue are a much cheaper brand of wool and it's much it's thinner and it's it's actually nicer to knit with it's very um silky but it doesn't measure the same so i'm not going to bother with that um there's not many browns too many grays i think um, a lot of blues, versions of blues and greens. Um, there's red and there's like a burgundy. Um, there's a a um, it's like a reddish, brownish red. It's called Outback, which is probably correct colour. Um, so I need some more red, kind of red colours, there's pink and then there's like a peach, but I'll also be getting pale pink, there's, there's, um, that's gold, but to me that's more a brown, and that's it, there's not really any browns, so... 
I'll get more brown, brownish colours in the next lot, same with more purples. But that's this blanket. So that's four rows. Like I said, it's going to be 20 or 21. So a long way to go, but it is enjoyable. It takes me about an hour to do one square. I'm not in a rush to do it. I might do 10 rows. Each square is 40 rows. 40 rows of 20 stitches. So it all lines up as you just saw with me adding in that other bit. So that's that. And the other thing, because that's the other blanket I finished. I haven't even put it in a tub yet. It's just been sitting here. I haven't been in here. And just a little packet of Ada 14 count. I've got some other 14 count. May make some miniature things, but that 16 count's probably better. And here is the fabric for the binding. Now it's not an exact match to the dark green, and I'm not bothered because I mean I've seen this quilt done where there's so many different shades of the colours, but I've stuck with the five. I'm quite happy to have this is actually three meters it's more than I'll need for the binding I'm quite happy to have that plain green as the binding and I will do a video sometime in June probably on how to make your own binding obviously I can't sew it on because this has got to be quilted first and I think this is just going to live on the table here until I get around I was looking at the batting to get that wondering if that's a hole to get that um, from that spotlight store but it's going to be just as cheap to get it from my local shop and then I know so I don't know the weight you know and at spotlight it's all done by weight but I don't know my local store only does one polyester whether it's 2.4 wide or 1.5 is I don't know I don't know the um, the weight of it so I'll just buy it from them. It's under a hundred dollars. I may actually get that in July, and then um, can wait. Yeah, you know, save up and get the backing fabric. But that will be the binding. It's more a bit more of an olivey green, but green's green. Like I said this. I could buy a different green, but. This isn't going to happen anytime soon. I'll get the binding cut and sewn together. And I may even leave that for, I won't cut it all into strips for binding, but I need 12 meters of it, which means probably about 15 strips. But we'll see, and we'll get that done. Get this blanket done, get that little miniature cross stitch done. And some other projects, get the sewing machine out, first time in probably years. And we'll get a few things done and I'll be back with a video next week on probably that miniature front door mat on tutorial. Any questions or any suggestions for videos, put them in the comments. And thank you very much for joining me today.